The Pittsburgh Steelers had this to say about DeAndre Hopkins' trade. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video and if you want more Pittsburgh Steelers news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel hitting that red button down below. The first story is that Jason McCourty would like to see Steelers trade for wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins and saying that they need help on the outside. Now the trade deadline is looming, in just under 3 weeks on November 5, what used to be a relatively quiet part of the NFL calendar has exploded in recent years, with teams getting much more aggressive to upgrade their teams in the middle of the season. ESPN's Jason McCourty thinks the Pittsburgh Steelers should pursue a trade for Tennessee Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins to help them get over the top. There are some pretty notable examples of in-season trades working out recently. In 2021, the Los Angeles Rams traded for Von Miller and went on to win the Super Bowl. The San Francisco 49ers traded for Christian McCaffrey in 2022 and he instantly turned them into a Super Bowl contender. Could an in-season trade for the Steelers help elevate their group? McCourtney seems to think so. Adam Schefter said the wide receivers are at a premium. So I want to keep it right here. DeAndre Hopkins goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers, McCourty said via ESPN's Get Up on each panelist listed as their favorite trade idea. While Tomlin is flirting about playing Russell Wilson, hopefully that he's able to get the ball out and get it to the edge a little bit more. Do you guys know who the second leading receiver is on the Pittsburgh Steelers outside the numbers? No, you have no idea because it's Najee Harris. They need help on the outside, no doubt. And a guy like DeAndre Hopkins who wins contested passes, he can go out there and win and really help them. This came on the heels of Adam Schefter's listing some possible trade targets to keep an eye on leading up to the trade deadline. His list on get up included Hopkins and the Titans are one in four. So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea from them to actually unload some salary cap money for an older player like DeAndre Hopkins, who will have his contract voided after this season anyway. Over the cap posted the cost to acquire possible trade targets at the beginning of October after the first four weeks of the season and at Hopkins at $7.2 million. With a few more weeks of game checks out of the way, that would be slightly lower. To be clear, there have been no reports linking the Steelers to Hopkins and at 33 years old, his best days are definitely behind him. He has 20 targets this season and has caught 14 passes of 175 yards and a touchdown. Though he did have over 1,000 receiving yards a year ago, the Titans have exactly been a great team this season. So perhaps he could find more success opposite George Pickens with Justin Fields or Russell Wilson throwing him the ball. Who from that list of Schefter's trades candidates would you most likely to see the Steelers pursue before the deadline? Currently, Mike Williams seems the most likely with credible reports linking him to the team. On top of this, when we also look further, we also do see that some other people also had things to say about a possible trade. Now, in a recent segment on air, the NFL insider Tom Pellicero gave some more insight on the potential Hopkins trade and what it would actually cost for them to do something like this. Look, at some of the recent trades that have happened, you saw the Keenan Allen move, you saw the Stefan Diggs move. Is DeAndre Hopkins in that group talent-wise? Yeah, for sure, Pellicero said. Those trades were essentially a fourth rounder, fourth or fifth in that range. And you would think that'd be kind of the range for a DeAndre Hopkins trade, he went on. Is Hopkins worth a fourth rounder for just a one year rental? Maybe. If the Steelers got enough production out of him and made a postseason run, sure, it could be worth it. But that's a big if. Pellicero did not note that there are teams calling about Hopkins. Are the Steelers one of those teams? he probably hear more on that in the coming days. Whether or not you believe Hopkins still has the talent, that's up for debate of course. But the reality is, Pittsburgh Steelers need the help at the wide receiver position and Hopkins very well could be a difference maker. If the Steelers were to miss out on the Hopkins trade, there's always some secondary options like Mike Williams of the Jets among others. So with week 7 almost here, I love to play some bets and we're going to be placing Pittsburgh Steelers to beat the New York Jets on actually BetUS. Now, if you haven't heard of BetUS, they give you a 150% bonus on your first deposit and then 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000 with code YouTube150. I absolutely love BetUS, one of the fastest payouts in the industry. And we're actually going to be putting 100 
$100 on this game for actually Steelers to win. And we got our money on it. So total win is $107. So like I mentioned, guys, definitely go check out BetUS. 150% bonus on your first deposit and then 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000 with code YouTube150. Definitely go check them out. The second story is that Steelers get a significant reinforcement on the offensive line. Now, when we also look further into this, the Pittsburgh Steelers finally got some good injury news when it comes to their Ballard offensive line as backup tackle Dylan Cook returned to practice on Thursday. So, on top of this, not only is this great to hear, but Cook has been on the team's injury reserve list since roster cut down day with a Linsfrak injury in his left foot. Cook's return to practice opens up a 21-day window, which, which can be actually reinstated to the active roster at any time. If the 21 days pass and he remains on the IR, he must stay there for the rest of the season. Cook had already been designated to return from the IR, along with outside linebacker Jamar Moon. The team is allowed to reinstate a total of 8 players from the injured reserve list over the course of the regular season. Cook suffered the injury during the second week of preseason and tried to play through it before landing on the injured reserve list. Cook, 26, is a 6 foot 6, 305 pound tackle from Butt, Montana, in his second season with the Steelers and third in the NFL. He joined Pittsburgh last May after being released by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after his rookie season. Cook spent the entire 2023 season on the Steelers' active roster as a number 4 tackle, and that was dressed for one game but did not make an appearance. This season, he once again appeared to set enter the season as the fourth tackle behind Dan Moore, Broderick, Tr Joy Jones, and also Troy Fatanou. Now, when it comes to Fatanou, was lost for the season to a knee injury before the third game, meaning the free agent signing Calvin Anderson has been serving as the backup tackle. In addition to playing both tackles sports in a training camp, Cook worked as the team's jumbo tight end, as well a role that he could reprise when he comes back. In addition to Fatanou, center guard Nate Herbig and also guard James Daniels have also been lost to season-ending injuries. Center Zach Fraser is expected to miss the next two games with an ankle injury suffered against the Las Vegas Raiders. Spencer Anderson, Calvin Anderson, and Max Sharping are all currently the only healthy backups on the 53-man roster entering Sunday's game. The Steelers currently only have 52 players on their active roster and would not need to make another move to make Cook active for this week's game. On top of this, there's also other great things to see because Justin Fields are likely to be benched by Pittsburgh Steelers for Russell Wilson, but Chicago Bears are still in a good spot to get the first round pick. Now, when it comes to Justin Fields, he could be headed to the bench for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but even if that happens this week, the Chicago Bears are in a decent position to reserve a first round draft pick for their former quarterback. Russell Wilson, now fully recovered from a calf injury that sidelined him before the season began, will get their first team reps in practice this week and could make the season debut Sunday when the Steelers host the New York Jets and Acrazur Stadium. So getting into the third story, we're going to be talking about why starting Russell Wilson is a boom or bust scenario for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, when the Pittsburgh Steelers signed veteran quarterback Russell Wilson to a one-year deal this offseason, the expectation was that he would lead Pittsburgh's offense to new heights. Unfortunately, the Steelers' Wilson suffered a cough injury during training camp to workouts that caused him to miss major time. Former Chicago Bears 2021 first round selection Justin Fields took over starter reps in his place. From camp to the back half of preseason play, Fields showed flashes of starter ability but never performed well enough to secure the spot. Eventually, Wilson returned from injury and won the job with two solid preseason showings against the Buffalo Bills and Detroit Lions. Prior to Week 1, the Steelers confirmed Wilson wasn't cleared to play against Atlanta Falcons. Since then, he's been either inactive or relegated to backup role while Fields held down the starting spot. Though, through six se regular seasons, Fields posted career highs in the completion percentage, passer rating, and passer success rate as he helped Pittsburgh to a 4-2 start. However, there is a dark side to Fields statistical resurgence. Pittsburgh's passing offense currently ranks 30th in attempts and 28th in yards and 27th in touchdown passes. After passing for under 160 yards in consecutive matchups versus the Dallas Cowboys and Las Vegas Raiders, Fields' starting now job now seems to be in jeopardy. 
even though this report conveys that Wilson will be taken over the starting role in the immediate future, Mike Tomlin isn't willing to reveal his cards. He's in a consideration this week, Tomlin said about Wilson's starting status during Wednesday's media availability session. We'll see where that leads us. Man, both guys at the quarterback position are scheduled to work Wednesday and we'll just walk it day by day. While Tomlin chooses to be coy about the decision, here are the, some of the reasons why someone like Fields to Wilson presents boom or bust potential for Steelers offense this season. Now Wilson's passing prowess from play at play action. Although it's well documented that Wilson's two year stint as Denver Bronco was mostly forgettable, he still showed signs of excellence as a play action passer in 2023. According to Pro Football Focus, Wilson registered 84.1 offensive grade and 80.7 passing grade from 120 play action dropbacks last season.